Namaste, and welcome to another edition of Inspirations, the weekly Nepal TV show that brings you inspiring people working in Nepal. I'm Mike Rosenkrantz of VSO, and today we have another special guest. We have Mr. Govinda Okoral, who is the Executive Director of the Alternative Energy Promotion Center, or AEPC. Welcome, Govinda. Nice to see you. Let's start off today's episode by you telling us a little bit about your childhood. Yeah. Where you grew up, your education, something about your brothers and sisters and your friends. Okay. So I was uh, grown up in my village in Piyutan. It's a, it is a, it's still a remote village, although now we have electricity since 1998. But when I was child, there was no electricity. So I did my schooling from there. So I had to walk around one and a half hour to reach school. So then come back to come back home around the same time. So we had a very, very, very simple education because our school didn't have that much teacher, and our teachers were very simple, but we respected them. Um, I mean, uh, we didn't have uh, actually in practical there is no holiday. The holidays or vacations were coincided with our harvesting or farming season. So when there was a rice plantation, then there was a holiday in school, vacation. So when there was a harvesting period for rice, then there was vacation in school. So it was coincided with the vacation. So we had to help our parents to work with many, many household chores, like collecting grass, collecting fuel wood, fetching water, drinking water, and also in the field. So school and the household job and the work, everything was combined. Uh, so we, I finished my school from Pyutan and uh, I had three brothers and two sisters who are bigger than me. And uh, we all went to school. My mother is illiterate, she cannot read and write. My father is form not formally educated, he learned himself. So we are from a simple family, a farmer family. But my father, who worked with English people in India, was convinced that the education is important for the kids. So when he came back to Nepal, and he helped us to go to school. So it was and our father who actually decided to send us to school and uh, make us a good people. Uh, so I enjoyed uh, my childhood when I remember that. I mean, it was fantastic. I mean, I know how Nepali villages is working, how people are growing up, how how hard life in villages is. And what are your um, educational uh, achievements and which degrees do you have? Yeah, I did my school from Bhutan, uh, and then I went to India for engineering. Uh, my basic degree is mechanical engineering. Then I went to Germany for master's and PhD. So for engineering and master's and PhD, I got a scholarship. So for engineering, Indian government gave me a scholarship to do engineering from Jaipur, Rajasthan. And then I went to Germany for my master, and which was provided by the German government. And for my PhD, uh, a green foundation called Heinrich Bull Foundation, they provided me a scholarship. And so how did you come to be the executive director of AEPC? Yeah. It's part of the Nepali government, right? Yeah, I did my PhD from Germany. Actually, I'm a professor in university. I am teaching mechanical engineering and industrial engineering. So in 2005, when King took over, I also happened to be in the team who were opposing the King's move. So I also went to prison for 13 days oh. in 2006 oh. so and then I came to close contact with several politicians and I was also partly involved in the political activities so in 2006 I got appointed by then minister as an executive director of AEPC I hope I try to do best but then new government came and they uh, they also uh, terminated my contract then I went to Pakistan, Bangladesh, Indonesia. I worked with SNB, a Dutch development organization. Then in 2012, I, I reapplied for the open competition. So I, I got this job based on the competition again. 
And what exactly does AEPC try to do? Can you tell us about some other projects? Uh, yeah, AEPC is a nodal agency of Government of Nepal, which is involved in the promotion of renewable and alternative energy technology. Main target is to provide access to clean energy for rural masses so that livelihood can be enhanced like the urban people. So we promote clean form of energy which will be mostly used by the rural people uh, in a decentralized manner. It's either it's a community owned or household, it's not like big system, hydropower, not like that. Maybe there is a 100, 200 kilowatt which will be used by 2,000, 3,000 people, but it's a community owned. Now, I know from some of my visits to villages in Tarai and also yeah. the western part uh, yeah. of the country that um, many people spend a number of hours collecting firewood yeah. and burning fire, yeah. which is polluting. Yeah. So how, how is AEPC helping yeah. so that people will um, you know, use alternative types of energy? Yeah. I mean, if you see the numbers, like uh, we have still around 70, for 75 percent Nepalese people using solid biomass for cooking because there are no alternatives in rural areas. There are few alternatives like for biogas for which you need to have cattle. So only few families they have one or two cattles, at least are better off families. They, you cannot say rich but relatively better off family. So and around 300,000 families now have domestic biogas for cooking fuel. But the remaining households, they have to rely on fuel loads. But we have technology. Although they are using this biomass-based cooking stove, but we are improving those stoves so, they, so that they consume almost 40% less firewood and the, their kitchen will be smoke-free and so that the women and children will be benefited because of the reduced workload in collecting biomass or indoor air pollution-free kitchen. So that we have promoted already more than 650,000 such wow. improved cook stove and we have target by 2017. We want to achieve that every household in Nepal will have pollution, indoor air pollution free kitchen. Every household? Yes, every household. Wow. That's a huge target. Kupan, the Sari Scratch Garepani, Nagarika Harik Barsi Crack Light, Hajaro Ku Nagat Preskar Parni, Pakka Pakki Chha. TV Hater Business Wa, Radio Tsunera Business. Ha, ha, Hamilai Phone Garepani, Business Patrika Ma Padi Rabusnus. Hey, 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 What are some of the issues, though? What are some of the problems, you know, that that you have? I mean, given that most of Nepal is very rural, I mean, how how do you create more awareness for the masses? I think uh, society is very dynamic. The, those people who were like you cannot compare ten years before and now. It's a, because of the mainly remittance and also awareness raising or political movement. Many many dynamics are there. And uh, we need to rely on the several institutions, whether they are governmental or non-governmental, or the media, to make people aware of the uh, uh, benefits and disadvantages of not using technologies available in the market. And secondly, I mean, there are two sides. You have to force demand generation. I believe in you have to generate the demand for any behavioral change or any technology or any facilities that government or private sectors are providing. To generate the demand, you make people aware of. And you have to rely on the local government, many NGOs, media, many institutions, whether it's a government or outside government. And second thing is supply side. If you raise the expectation and demand, then you have to strengthen the supply side, which is more sustainable. So we are working on the two front. So when people want buy gas, then we, t we need to train companies. So they go and they do marketing and they install and they provide after sales service. Then apart from enhancing supply side and demand side, we have also other role is monitoring. 
whether properly uh, proper quality type of systems are being provided, quality services being given, whether that job is done or properly not. That is also job of the government. So I see that the demand side, supply side, and the quality and monitoring aspect. These are three things we need to take care of. Uh, rest, I mean, there are many actors because government should not involve itself in the implementation. Mm. That is my firm belief. So implementation, let other will do, but you, you create an enabling environment so that proper implementation can happen. That is the job of the government, what I am trying to do. Let's switch gears a little bit now. Yeah, yeah. Can you tell us about some of the uh, incredible moments in your life when I completed my um, school, like 10 plus 2, I wanted to be a teacher. Actually, a teacher in village, so I went to village. I became science and mathematics teacher for primary school. So I also taught students. Then uh, suddenly I, it came into my mind, I should be, I should have higher education. And my father also, he is so motivated, he forced me to leave job and go to uh, higher edu for higher education. So I came here and then I tried for scholarship because my father who was not able to finance my education for engineering and so on. So it was not easy job. I mean, five months, six months, seven months I couldn't get any scholarship to go to India. Then I, somebody told me you apply for the army and if you become an army then there are chances to get scholarship. Mm -hmm. So I tried to join Nepalese army, second lieutenant. But simultaneously, I also applied in many scholarships. I got selected in second lieutenant. Then simultaneously, I got news from Indian Embassy that I got a scholarship. So it was a, again very hard moment to decide whether to join army and get officer job or to go to engineering again. So I, I decided to go engineering. I, I left that option. Who has inspired you in your life? Actually, it's, it's my father. Uh, he is uh, still with me. He is 87 years old. Uh -huh. I always respect him. I never go against his wish and will. Till now. Whatever he says, I do. I'm so convinced from his uh, greatness and his vision. And I, I, I'm surprised. Although I am now educated, literate and so on, I always invade his vision. He is not educated. I mean, he cannot read and write right. English. but. He has a, such a vision, I mean, uh, I'm always inspired and respect my father. Although my mother is also helping us, but <laughs> father is uh, a figure that I always respect and I like to be always with him, that's why he's always with me. We, so. And finally, uh, what message would you like to leave our viewers with? Yeah, uh, I mean, life is uh, 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 an opportunity. To become a human being is an opportunity. Don't spoil it. If you spoil opportunity, it's gone. It's a one time. Like it's, if you fail, if you don't write good in examination, you will fail. But the life is only one opportunity. You cannot have. Maybe next time you don't know. But the, and then to achieve your goal and to become a, a good human being, always respect teachers and parents and elderly. And that helps you a lot. I mean, I learned that you respect your elders, people, your parents, and your teacher. And think that this is an, uh, a fantastic opportunity I got to become a human being. I must utilize it for the better, for me and for society. Very good. Thank you thank so you much. much. Thank, thank, you. Yeah. thank you. Really thank appreciate you. it. Okay, thank you. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you again next week. Very much for